Okay, so, again, just ready for this. We're diving into some stories that sound made up, like, seriously out there, but not just, like, weird for the sake of it. These stories are all about, like, what humans are capable of, like, way out there stuff. Oh, I'm ready. Way it on me. All right, so we're talking about this book, right? It's called Tales of the Unbelievable. And let me tell you, it's like they did exactly what they were doing with that title. We're talking about people with abilities, talents you wouldn't believe. Okay, now you've got my attention. I'm intrigued. So basically, get ready to, like, suspend your disbelief for a bit. Let's see if maybe, just maybe, there's some truth hidden in these unbelievable stories. What do you think? I'm game. You know what I always find so fascinating about these kinds of stories? It's like, even if they sound totally wild, they kind of touch on something we all wonder about deep down. You know, like, what if we're capable of so much more than we realize? Right? It's that little spark of what if that gets you thinking. Like, take our first story, okay? Huh. It features this guy, Edgar, and he's known as the Chameleon. And that's not just a cool nickname. This guy's skin actually changes color with his emotions. Whoa, hold on. What? Like a mood ring or something. How does that even work? That's the thing, right? It's like, imagine you feel a rush of joy and boom, your skin is glowing sunshine yellow. Or you get angry and turn crimson red. The book describes it as like watching a living, breathing, mood ring. Okay, now that is wild. But you know, that visual, that connection between his inner world and how he looks on the outside, it makes you think, right, about the connection between the mind and body. Like, we all know that your emotions can trigger physical responses, but this is like next level stuff. Totally. The book talks about how Edgar was picked on like crazy as a kid. People thought he was a freak. But the way he turned that pain into art, It'll blow your mind. His murals, they're not just colorful, they're like emotional explosions on canvas. Wow. So it's like he's translating pure emotion into something real, something you can see. You know how some people say they can like feel the energy of painting? Imagine how intense Edgar's work must be. And it's like his art skips all the words and goes straight to the core, straight down you feel. It's wild to think about, right? This thing he was once so ashamed of, something that made him an outcast, became his strength, his voice. It makes you rethink the whole idea of normal, doesn't it? Edgar's story is like a giant, screaming, colorful reminder that what makes us different can also be our superpower. You ready for the next one? Okay, hold on to your hats, because this story takes us from a world of swirling colors to, like, the raw power of nature. We're talking about Celine, the storm whisperer, and yeah, you heard that right. She can just seemingly talk to storms. Wait, seriously, hold on, let me wrap my head around this. Across cultures, throughout history, you hear these stories of people who could influence the weather, right? Yeah, like shamans or mystics who are deeply connected to nature, you know. Exactly. It's like this primal fear and awe of nature, this force that can be both beautiful and terrifying. And Celine, she stands right at that edge, facing down these raging storms with this almost like supernatural calmness. It's so unbelievable. And it makes you wonder, right, is it some kind of ancient wisdom she's tapped into? Or maybe she's just super sensitive to the energies that drive weather patterns. Who knows? We may not have all the answers, but it makes you think twice about our place in the grand scheme of things, you know? Like, maybe we're not as in control as we think we are. For sure, like, there's this one story in the book about a massive storm. I'm talking a real monster bearing down on her village, and everyone is terrified, expecting the worst. And then Celine, she just walks out to meet it head on. Whoa. You know, that image alone speaks volumes. You've got this tiny figure, right? And she's dwarfed by this incredible force of nature, and yet there's this sense of courage, of defiance. It's like she's facing down not just the storm, but also our own fear of the unknown, of things we can't control. It's like she's saying, we might not always be able to control what life throws at us, but we can control how we face it. Which is kind of inspiring when you think about it. It really is. And it gets you thinking, right? About the storms in your own life, the tough times, the challenges. What inner strength did you find within yourself to get through it? Everyone has those moments. Okay, so from the raw energy of the storm, we're switching gears into something a little spookier, a little more mysterious. Get ready for this. This next story is about a boy named Leo. And Leo can speak to shadows. Okay, now we're getting into some really intriguing stuff. I mean, we all have shadows, right? But to think they can actually hold echoes of the past, whispers of forgotten stories, it sends chills down your spine, doesn't it? Right, it's like this idea that what we see as empty space is actually full of unseen activity. It's like that saying, if these walls could talk, 
Only in this case, it's the shadows doing the talking. It's giving me goosebumps just thinking about it. So Leo, he can actually have conversations with these shadows. It's not just idle chit chat, right? He's tapping into something deeper, like the whispering secrets from the past. Exactly. It's like he's talking to the hidden parts of ourselves, you know? It's the stuff we try to forget, the regrets, the what ifs. Okay, yeah, like the skeletons in the closet. We all had a. Yeah, exactly. It's like he's got this direct line to those hidden corners of our minds. And that's what's so fascinating, right? Because it makes you think about what we can learn from those shadows. Or they hold a key to understanding ourselves better. Or even like healing old wounds. That's pretty deep. So are you saying that Leo, just by talking to these shadows, he can unlock those hidden parts of people, even if they don't want to face them? Well, the book doesn't get into that specifically, but it makes you wonder, right? Like, what if he can help people confront those very emotions, those unresolved issues? Mm. It's like he's a therapist for the shadows. Wow. So it's not just about, like, ghosts or anything. It's about facing the darker side of ourselves. That's heavy stuff. It is. And it's something we all deal with, whether we realize it or not. We all have those shadows lurking within us. It's part of being human. Okay, so how does this shadow talking thing even work? Does the book say? You know, it doesn't really explain the mechanics of it, which I think adds to the mystery, you know? But there's this one story that really illustrates what Leo can do with this ability. It's about a woman who's just completely lost, heartbroken after a terrible loss. And her shadow, it's like a physical manifestation of her grief, just this heavy oppressive presence. Oh, wow. That's intense. So what does Leo do? Does he, like, banish the shadow or something? Not exactly. He does something much more profound, I think. He actually communicates with the shadow, like he's having a conversation with her grief. And by giving it a voice, by acknowledging it, he helps her to understand her own pain, to process it in a way that she couldn't do on her own. That's amazing. So it's like he's helping her to heal by literally talking to the darkness. Right. And it makes you think about how we often try to push away our pain, bury those dark emotions. But maybe sometimes the best way to heal is to face them head on, give them a voice, just like Leo does with those shadows. Okay, so we've got Edgar, who paints with his emotions, Celine, who communes with storms, and Leo, who converses with shadows. It's like they're all connected somehow, like they're all tapping into this hidden layer of reality that most of us are completely unaware of. It's like they're showing us that the boundaries of what we think is possible are way more fluid than we realize. And maybe we all have these hidden depths within us, these incredible abilities just waiting to be unlocked. We either. Okay, so these stories are incredible, mind-bending even. But I have to ask, what does it all mean? Can we really find truth in the seemingly impossible? I mean, it's easy to dismiss these stories as pure fantasy, but something tells me there's more to it than that. I mean, part of me wants to say it's all just a bunch of tall tales, right? But there's this other part, this nagging feeling that maybe just, maybe there's something more to it. Right. It's like when you really stop and think about it, the universe is full of mysteries, little things we can't explain. And maybe these stories are just little glimpses into that, those hidden corners of reality. Yeah, like we only see the tip of the iceberg, right? Yeah, and these stories, these they're like diving deep into the unknown. Exactly. And maybe that's what makes them so captivating. They make us question everything we thought we knew, push us to expand our own limited view of the world. So what are we saying then? Are we saying these stories are true or not? It's a tough one, right? That's the thing, isn't it? It's not about finding a definitive answer, a yes or no. It's about the journey of exploration. The willingness to entertain those what-ifs. And who knows? Maybe in that process of questioning, we stumble upon our own truths. They like that, embracing the mystery. So if we're circling back to that original question, can we find truth in the unbelievable? Maybe the answer is more about how open we are to the possibility. Exactly. It's like with Edgar's art, remember? It wasn't just about the colors, but about the emotions they evoked, the connections they sparked. And Celine, she wasn't trying to overpower nature, but to understand it, work with it. It's like she was reminding us that we're a part of something much bigger than ourselves. And Leo, he wasn't afraid to confront the darkness, to delve into the shadows. And in doing so, he found a way to help people heal, to find peace. It's like he was showing us that even in the darkest corners, there's potential for growth, for understanding. So what I'm hearing is that these stories, whether they're literally true or not, they offer valuable lessons. They challenge us to think differently, to see the world with fresh eyes. Absolutely. They remind us that reality is full of surprises and that the human spirit is capable of extraordinary things. So to everyone listening, maybe take a moment to consider what unbelievable stories you carry within yourself, what hidden depths are waiting to be explored. 
And hey, if you stumble upon something truly extraordinary, something that makes you question the very fabric of reality, you know where to find us. Until next time, keep exploring the unbelievable.